Hi guys, I'm Jack and today we are going to learn how to deploy a data request or contract and interact with the Flux Oracle. So if you're a prediction market, decentralized exchange or protocol that wants to avoid data manipulation attacks by having your data backed by a decentralized group of validators putting their own money on the line, then you've come to the right place. First we're going to navigate to the get started section of the Flux Protocol website. This will take us to the documentation welcome page where we'll find some information on the Flux Oracle as well as the data requester link. Click on it. So for prerequisites, uh, you should already be comfortable with using the command line, shell commands, and have some experience with crypto wallets and cryptocurrencies in general. It also helps have some experience in Rust and IDEs like VS Code, but it's not required for this tutorial. Note that this is a testnet version and will not be directly representative of how the mainnet version will function. For example, in order to make testing easily accessible, requester contracts will not be whitelisted in the testnet version. Now let's get started. So if you haven't already deployed a smart contract on Near and you do not have Rust, the Near CLI, or a Near wallet, we're going to show you how to set it up from scratch first. So we're going to select the, follow the instructions here in the setting up the contract section and we're going to be redirected to the near getting started with smart contracts page first we're going to install rust up in order to set up the rust tool chain on our computers this allows us to compile and run rust projects like the one we're about to set up next we're going to configure our current shell so that we can run the rust commands and then we're going to add the wasm target to our tool chain which will allow us to compile our Rust smart contract into WebAssembly to be deployed on the near network. Next, we're going to set up our near account, aka our testnet wallet. Just pick a name and set up your recovery option for getting back into your account if you lost your ability to access it. I'll just be using the seed phrase to be quick. And next up, we're going to install the near CLI tools, which will allow us to interact with contracts on the near network from our terminal. And before we set up the contract itself, we're going to use the near login command to locally store our key so that we can freely interact with the near network via the command line without having to provide credentials every single time. Now that we've set up everything for the requester contract, now it's time to download it. Go to the GitHub link and click the green code button to download the zip version of the requester sample contract. Unzip it and place it in a directory of your choosing. Alright, and when we've got the contract right where we want it, now let's build the thing. We have provided a set of scripts to make it easy to compile, deploy, and make requests to the contract so you can start running the build script located at the top level of the repo. Once everything has been compiled and the WASM file has been made, we are ready to deploy. If you run the deploy requester scripts with your account ID, it will first set up your testnet account with our wrapped near token contract and the Oracle contract. It'll convert your testnet near into wrapped near to be able to use the Oracle, and it'll deploy your requester contract on the near testnet with your account. Alright, and now that your contract is set up and running on the testnet, it's time to fire up your first data request. So this is the simple implementation of the create data request function in the requester contract. It takes two arguments, amount and payload. Amount represents the validity bond amount, or how many tokens the requester needs to post in order for their request to be accepted by the oracle. And then the second one is the payload, and that's the meat of the request. It contains all of the data needed for the request to be processed by the Oracle and to be answered by the validator. The new data request args in the lib file shows all of the required and optional fields that are in the payload of the request. To start, the sources are the API endpoint and JSON path to get the specific piece of data if the data request is an API endpoint. The tags are used by the requester for organizing their requests into categories and also automatically generates and stores an indexer called a nonce for each data request so their outcomes can be easily stored and accessed. The description is where the human readable question would be placed to be used by an arbitrator or human validator. 
In other words, you will need to fill this description in for requests where the piece of data being requested isn't coming from a particular API endpoint, but rather needs to be manually retrieved by a human validator. The outcomes is for providing the validator with multiple choices of answers they can respond to the data request with. For instance, when the number of outcomes are already known. The challenge period defines how much time validators get to dispute outcomes set by other validators. If an incorrect answer is provided, other validators have time to challenge the answer by providing and staking on one of their own. The data type is the type of data that the outcome will be, whether it's a string or a number. If it's a number, it will have a value multiplier for decimal values and a negative positive boolean for easy sending. As an example, we have provided a request to get the most recent price of Bitcoin from the CoinPaprika API. Run the request script located in the scripts folder with your testnet ID and boom, you have made your first request. Open the Oracle Explorer link towards the bottom of the request documentation and you'll see all of the requests that have been made to the Oracle. You should find yours at the top just like this. From there, you can see your account ID, when you created the request, how much has been staked in the outcome of your request, the tags and other metadata around the request. Note that the last tag is your nonce, which will be used by your contract to get the outcome. You may already see at the bottom that the answer has been provided in the first resolution window, meaning that one of the automated validators has already queried the API endpoint in your request and provided the data you requested. If you look at the round one resolution window, which is the second resolution window, you'll see a timer at the top right corner that represents how much time is left for other validators to challenge the initially staked outcome. We're just going to enter a time machine and voila! The challenge window has closed and your outcome has been reached. To view our request and its outcome from the requester contract, run the response script with the nonce that was the last tag in the request, and you will be able to view the initial request as well as the outcome. To show what a valid arbitrator data request looks like, we've also provided the requester arb script. Run it in the same way as the previous request and check it out on the Oracle Explorer. Once a validator has come along and provided an outcome, and after the challenge period has ended and the request has been finalized, you'll be able to check the response in the same way as the previous request. Run the response script with the nonce corresponding to the number data request you made, and voila, you have your outcome. Don't forget to brutally smash that like button, comment, and subscribe to receive some more updates and tutorials on how to use our protocol. I'm Jack, and thank you for watching.